thrilling adventures of the shadow are on the air. Brought to you each week at this time by your neighborhood blue coal dealer. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. It's not patriotic to hoard food or money, but it is patriotic to put in a good supply of coal right now. You'll be helping your government out of possible future transportation problems and also helping and insuring yourself by keeping a full supply on hand. Get enough to last you until summertime. Place your order of coal now and insist on blue coal because this superior fuel is especially prepared for home use especially prepared to give you dependable home heating with real economy. Be prepared. Call your blue coal dealer tomorrow morning. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret the secret of hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Return of Anatole Chevenny. Anatole Chevenick, police sure of arrest in 24 hours. All right, Chevenick, your little game is over. Really, Commissioner Weston? Yeah, Chevenick. Those notes with your name on them, warning us that you were going to steal the jewels, and the white gardenia that you always leave, you won't wiggle out of this. There are just two things you have overlooked, Commissioner. Yeah, what? Point number one, you have not been able to find the jewels which you say I, I purloined. Point number two... At the time this robbery occurred, I was 3,000 miles from here. And I can prove it. Extra, extra, police, release Anatole Chevenick again for lack of evidence. Read all about it. Something has got to be done about Anatole Chevenick. Three times he's struck in 60 days. The police must do something. But my jewels, the police are helpless. Warns victims in advance. Police are powerless. What can we do against him? He always has an alibi. Eh? Who is it? Who is there? You. Why have you come here? What's that in your hand? No, no. No. Stay away. No. Oh! Oh! And so, murder closed the book on Anatole Shevenik. But is that all? Can the elusive Shevenik solve the mystery of that last great darkness? Who can say what faint line divides the quick from the dead? And once having crossed that line, is it possible to return? This is the case of Anatole Shevenik, which strangely enough begins with the end of Anatole Shevenik. There, gentlemen, on that slab here in the morgue lies the mortal remains of Anatole Shevenik. At last, we know where he is. No thanks to you, Weston. Your police would never have caught him. Ah, listen to him, Cranston. You'd think that he, the great one and only special investigator Devlin, had been personally responsible for it. As a matter of fact, gentlemen, neither of you came anywhere near catching him. Well... Shevenick even sent notes telling the police where and when he would strike next. And what about the white gardenia, his signature? <laughs> Some police force. He always had a perfect alibi. And for that matter, what did you do for the insurance companies that pay your salary? All you ever did was pass the buck to me and my men... Some special investigator. Now, just Mr. a minute. Mr. Devlin, uh, Commissioner, please remember where we are. That body lying there. Oh, quite so, Cranston. Well, yes. it's foolish for us to argue, Devlin. Our troubles are over now, anyhow. I'd say they were just beginning, Commissioner. Shevenick was murdered. Who did it? We don't know yet, Cranston, but we're working on it. Not much to work on, Commissioner. Shevenick was found stabbed to death in his apartment, killed by a sharp-pointed instrument. 
I believe your police report reads, a gem cutter's tool. Well, they probably used it to cut up the stolen gems so they couldn't be identified. Gem cutting is too delicate a job for a one-handed man, Commissioner. One hand? Yeah, Shevenick's right hand's missing. Severed at the wrist. We discovered that when we found his body. Why, I can't believe it. Now look for yourself. I will. Hmm, so it is. Then that's the reason he always wore those gray suede gloves. Yeah, to conceal his artificial right hand. This only proves how little anyone really knew of Anatole Shevenick. No accomplices, no friends. He was the man nobody knew. Anatole Shevenick, the great jewel thief, had only one hand. One hand, two hands. What difference does it make? Difference, Commissioner. I can't help thinking that if his right hand hadn't been cut off by a bandsaw when he was a child, he might never have turned to crime. What's that? Somebody just came into the morgue. Can't see who it is. The light is so dim. Pardon me, gentlemen, but uh, am I right in assuming that this is the body of Anatole Shevenick? Who are you? I'm George Gilroy. May I ask who you are? I, I'm Police Commissioner Weston, and I left strict orders that no one was to be admitted to the morgue while Shevenick's body was here. Indeed, Commissioner. I have a court order giving me the body for experimental purposes. Huh? You see, Anatole Shevenick willed his body to me. Oh, then you're Professor Gilroy, the man who... who brings back the dead as the sensation-seeking press would have it? <laughs> Let me reassure you, I have not been successful in my experiments. Yet. <laughs> Shevenick returns from the dead. Police baffled. Daring jewel robberies continue. Shevenick returns from the dead. Everything all right, Commissioner? Oh, hello, Cranston. Oh, stop worrying, Devlin. Shevenick had better not show up here tonight. Commissioner, I... Come into this room here, will you? I can't talk over this here. All right. Blame Devlin for worrying about this wedding reception tonight, Commissioner. Oh. Mrs. Porter's jewels are insured with my company for $50,000. <laughs> now look, Devlin, Shevenick is dead. You saw his body lying in the morgue. I know, Commissioner, but that no telling us that he was coming here tonight. If Mrs. Porter's jewels are stolen... Devlin's right, Commissioner. Even with a fresh gardenia left with a warning note of Shevenick's signature. Cranston, I tell you, somebody is masquerading as Shevenick. Shevenick's in his grave. Not grave, Commissioner. Remember Professor Gilroy? Hey, that's right. Yes, Gilroy did take the body of Shevenick to his laboratory. Well, just a moment. Commissioner Weston. Yes, Mrs. Porter. This note was just thrust into my hands in the ballroom. Note? Let me see it. What? There's another gardenia wrapped up in it. Gardenia? What does the note say, Cranston? Jewels were made to be worn, but not by such as you. Signed merely with the initial C. C. And you think Shevenick is here? Oh. Commissioner, what'll I do? Mrs. Porter, if Shevenick got in here tonight, he won't get out. I'm going to call Cardona and his men on the grounds and give the alarm. Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Porter, it was very wise of you not to wear your jewels tonight. Not wear my jewels? Why, I am... Oh, my jewels are gone. Shevenick has stolen my jewels. <laughs> And that's the story, Margot. Note, flower, and theft all point only to one man. You know, this whole business has Weston talking to himself. Oh, I can't say I blame him, Lamont. It is pretty weird. My bosom friend and companion, Big Charlie, used to talk to himself. But he quit. Why, Shrevey? He didn't like the answers he gave himself he didn't like. <laughs> oh, Shrevey. <laughs> That's the truth, Miss Lane. <laughs> Why, he got so sore on himself one day for something he said that he wouldn't speak to himself for days he wouldn't speak. <laughs> oh, Shrevey, stop. Shrevey, sometimes I think you make these stories up. <laughs> Why, Mr. Cranston, are you putting the third degree to my veracity? Are you putting... <laughs> Shrevey, watch for your driving. Yes, sir, I always do. Oh, oh. Oh. Shrevey, for a moment there, I thought you were going to hit that other car. Yeah, <laughs> Don't we live dangerously, though? Mm -hmm. Hey, what's this? What? This wrapped up paper. I just noticed it. Let me see it. Here, Mr. Cranston. Thank you. Lamont, a white gardenia. Wrapped up in this note. Addressed to you, Margot. To me? Read it. It says, I have stolen no jewels from you. Instead, I give you a pearl. A pearl of wisdom. Your friend Lamont Cranston pursues a dangerous game when he pursues Anatole Shevenick. Lamont. Shrevey, go after that car that nearly ran into us. Well, it ain't nowhere in sight now, Mr. Cranston. He turned the corner up ahead. He was going like a shot he was going. Okay, Mr. Shevenick. We'll see about you later. What are you going to do, Lamont? 
Margo, you're going home. I'm going to see Commissioner Weston. You know, I've been rather lukewarm about this whole case up to now. But Mr. Shevenick has just aroused my sporting blood. Shrevey, I say I'm perfectly safe here in my own apartment. Now, go back to your cab, please. Must that be definite, Miss Lane? Mr. Cranston said... Definite. I'll be all right here alone. Well, good. Okay, Miss Lane. I'll go right back to Commissioner Weston's office and pick up Mr. Cranston I'll pick. Goodbye. Goodbye, Shrevey. I needed a bodyguard, for goodness sake. What's this? A note, another one. Evidently, you don't take my written warning seriously, Miss Lane. So the next time, I shall have to give you my warning... In person. Oh. Yes, Miss Lane. Anatole Chevalier. But you... You're... Was is the correct tense, Miss Lane. I was dead. But as you see... I have even tricked death. (laughs) What do you want? Merely to prove to you that Anatole Shevanik is alive and to warn you for the last time not to allow Mr. Cranston to interfere with me. If he does... Ah, that is Mr. Cranston now, Miss Lane, calling from police headquarters. Well, why don't you answer it? Hello? Margot? Yes, Lamont, I, I... You may tell him I'm here, Miss Lane. Lamont Anatole Shevenick is here at my apartment. What? Can you hold him till I get there? Well, I'll try. He wants me to stay here until he gets here, does he not? Margo. Margo, answer me. Unfortunately, I have urgent business elsewhere. Remember my warning. Lamont, he's just gone. And I'm shaking. Gone? Well, no matter. Shevenick and I shall meet sometime soon. Right now, I'm going to Professor Gilroy's laboratory and ask a few important questions. But Professor Gilroy has already been interviewed by the police. Yes, I know, Margot. But somehow, people have a way of talking when their interviewer is the shadow. In a moment, we'll continue with Act Two of The Return of Anatole Shevenik. First, a word about your health. This is the season for head cold. And among contributing causes are drafty rooms, poorly heated houses, and frequent quick changes of temperature. You'll find that heating your home with blue coal is a great help toward overcoming these dangers. You see, blue coal is especially prepared for home use, and that is very important. It means, for example, that blue coal is delivered to your home in just the proper size for your heating plant, the right size to give you even, dependable, comfortable warmth. You won't find the rooms too hot, you won't find them chilly. You'll find them at just the right temperature for comfortable, healthful living. Then, on top of that, when you install the new Blue Coal Automatic Heat Regulator, you immediately free yourself from the work and worry of adjusting furnace dampers. Goodbye to that. Goodbye to running up and down stairs, adjusting various chains and levers several times a day. You save effort, you save fuel, and you save money with the new Blue Coal Heat Regulator. Ask your Blue Coal dealer for a free demonstration tomorrow. He's listed under the words Blue Coal in the yellow section of your classified phone directory. Now, back to the shadow. (laughs) Stupid, stupid. They laugh at me at my experiments. Well, they shall see. (laughs) Professor Gilroy. What? That laugh. But there's nobody here but me. You're wrong, Professor Gilroy. The shadow is also here. Where are you? I can't see you. Are you a spirit? A spirit from the beyond? No, Professor. I am a man of flesh and blood as yourself. But don't look for me. No one has ever seen the shadow. What do you want of me, invisible one? I want you to tell me the truth about your experiments with the body of Anatole Chebenik. What more can I tell you than that they're not completely successful, but... We are progressing. Progressing? Suppose I were to tell you, Professor Gilroy, that Anatole Shevenik has been seen alive. Alive? That's not possible. Yet, Shevenik's body is still here. Then, Professor Gilroy, you have no objections to my viewing the body, have you? I don't see what you'll gain by that shadow. It will remove any doubts I might have about your connections with the jewel thefts of Shevenik. Thefts committed since his supposed death. All right. 
If you must be convinced, come with me. You will see that I speak the truth. Here and here. This is my dissecting laboratory. Shevenick's body is lying in here, in this box. Why? Why, he's... Yes, Professor Gilroy. Shevenick's body is gone. Yes, Governor. Uh, no, Governor, but uh, there is still no trace. Yes, uh, Shevenick's alive, all right. Uh, no doubt of it. Uh, yes, Governor, I... Uh, uh, I know you want some action on this case. Now, I'll tell you the way I've got it all figured, Governor. I uh, have got it all... Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, it must have been cut off. It's a busy man. Very busy. Commissioner, that was the governor on the phone, wasn't it? <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. My job here is hanging by a thread because of this crazy Shevenick business, and all you two can do is make bad gags. All you have to do is give us your permission to enter Shevenick's house. For the 20th and... time, Cranston, the answer is no. Why? Miss Lane, I... For the 20th time, my reasons are the same. That house was sealed by the police after Shevenick was murdered so that the place could not be tampered with and possible clues destroyed or concealed. Well, then, Commissioner, now that you believe Shevenick to be alive... Who said that? You did, just a moment ago. Yeah, I saw it. Well, doggone it, he must be alive. Everything points to it. You say you saw him and then his body disappearing from Professor Gilroy's laboratory. So you see, there's no longer any reason to keep that apartment sealed. Well, I don't know, I don't know. Suppose the murderer should get... What murderer? What murderer? Anatole Shevenick's murderer, of course. But you just said that Anatole Shevenick was alive. If he's alive, he's not dead. So? There is no murder or murderer. It's obvious. Oh. Now, look, I... Uh, here. Here are the keys to Shevenick's apartment. Now get out of my office before I lose my mind completely. Thank you, Commissioner. Come on, Margot. You know, Lamont, I don't think we're very welcome here today. <laughs> yeah, busy man. Very busy. Will you two get out of here? <laughs> this is it, Mr. Cranston. 7720 River Street. All right, Shrevey. Come on, Margot. Let's see what we can find in Shevenick's house. I hope it's not Shevenick. You could say that again. You could say it. Afraid, Shrevey? Uh, uh, you want I should wait for you here, Mr. Creston? <laughs> okay, Shrevey, I understand. You wait here. And if we're not out in ten minutes, call Commissioner Weston and have him come here. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Take what care of yourself, take. Up the steps, Margot. All right. Goodness, Lamont, this old house seems to hang right over the river. Yes, Shevenick must have picked it because it would be so easy to escape from. Lamont... Suppose Shevenick really is inside. Well, this is apparently the only door to the house. And the police seal across the door is still intact. You... You go in first, Lamont. All right, Margo. Goodness, it's so dark in here. Yeah. Seems to be a long haul. Come on. Lamont, there's someone here. Where? I can feel it. Lamont in there. Look, Lamont. The shadow of a woman against the windows. Yes, Margot. So it is. Feel along the wall for the light switch. All right. Got it. Anatole. Anatole. Lamont. Quiet. Anatole, is that you? Switch on the lights, Margot. Oh. Who are you? May I ask you the same question? I am the wife of Anatole Shevenik. I suppose you are from the police. His wife, but I thought that... You thought that Anatole had no wife. But you are wrong. He fooled everyone. No one knew I existed. Well, when we came in here, the door was sealed. How did you get in? There are more than one means of getting in and out of Anatole Shevenik's house. Mrs. Shevenik, your husband, if he is still alive, will be brought to justice eventually, so if I... If he is still alive? You say that very strangely. Well, you know, of course, that your husband was murdered. Oh, no. No, he is not dead. I can prove it. it this newspaper. Here. Read it. What does it say, Lamont? It's an item in the personal column. It says... Rene, come to the apartment tonight, signed A.C. You see? It is a signal we had agreed upon. Does that prove to you he is alive? He will be here tonight. Uh, but you will not catch him. He is too clever. Mrs. Shevenick, this may be a trap to get you. Oh, no, no. There are only two other people who know my husband. There is no... What's that? Sounds like someone's in the other room. I will see who that is. Wait, I'll come with you. No, run! Stop! Stop, I say! Run in there and lock the door. Shevenick must be there. Well, if he's in there. Go, Rennie. Come on, that Shevenick. I couldn't forget that boy. I'll have to break this door down, Margot. Look out. Come on, he's gone. Yes, must have escaped through some secret passage the way she got in. I, I wonder where she. Come on. There. Behind that sofa. 
Oh, Lamont, she's dead. He stabbed her. Yes, Smuggle. Wait a minute. This is very strange. What, Lamont? This woman was stabbed by a right-handed man. Anatole Shevenik didn't have a right hand. Yes, I'm sure of it, Margot. It couldn't have been Anatole Shevenik who stabbed her. But she called his name. She must have believed it was he. And I recognized his boy through that door. No, it doesn't add up, Margot. There's some vital piece in this crazy puzzle that's missing. Oh, Lamont, what do you suppose it is? Missing? Missing? Somehow the missing hand is the solution to the whole mystery, Margot. Now, what is the connection? Well, why don't you talk it over with the Commissioner Weston and Mr. Devlin? Maybe they can... Devlin! That's it, Margot. If no one knew anything about Shevenick, how could Devlin know that Shevenick's hand had been cut off by a banzo when he was a child? It was just a slip, but I hear... Well, when did Mr. Devlin say that? That day we viewed Anatole Shevenick's body in the morgue. I see it perfectly now. Margot, call the police and tell them to surround the house of Peter Devlin. The shadow is going to pay him a call. And if I'm correct... The case of Anatole Shevenik will finally end tonight. You will continue on with me, Peter Devlin. You have traveled too far along the road to turn back now. I never knew about the murder. Not until it happened. This gem-cutting tool in my hand is sharp. I can use it. I have used it before for other things besides changing the shape and sizes of stolen jewels. And if I go to the police? Oh, Renee tried to go to the police tonight, and she is no longer able to talk. Think it over. I can do both jobs. You have seen that for yourself. For now, Anatole Shevenik will have two hands. I can steal the jewels and cut them as well. No. Your share will be bigger now. No, Shevenik. You are the only one who could reveal me to the police. He is dead because he tried to withhold some of the gems. Rene is dead because she could not be silent. And you are the only one left. Why, it would be so easy no, to... No, no, please. Don't kill me, please. Fool. Coward. I don't need you. I can work alone. <laughs> Shevanik. What? Who calls my name? The Shadow. Shevanik, the Shadow. Yes. I've heard of you, Shadow. You are the one I feared most. So, Jacques Shevanik. Your brother Anatole had an identical twin. That explains the so called return of Anatole Shevanik. You took his place. His twin brother. Yes, my brother is dead. I killed him. You also murdered your brother's wife. He knew too much. And you, Devlin, yours is the greater crime. You worked for the insurance companies as a special investigator. And you were informed of all plans to protect the jewels from the Shevenik brothers. The plans which you gave to them in return for your share of the loot. Shadow, I was wrong. I, I see it now. What can I do to make up for my crime? You can testify against this murderer here. Perhaps the court will be lenient with you. Testify against me? No, Devlin. If you are dead, no one will know. There will be no proof. Look out, Devlin, the knife! Uh killed him. <laughs> yes, Shadow. His tongue is silent. Now the law can never get me. Jacques Shevenik, you have been tried and found guilty of murder in the first degree by a jury of your peers. All through this trial, you have been silent. Have you anything to say before this court pronounces sentence upon you? Your Honor, it is true that I have not spoken. I believed I would be wiser not to speak. But now that the trial is over, I realize what I have done. I know what a fool I was ever to believe that I could break the laws and not pay. I know now that my life would have been happier and would have come to a better end if I had stayed on the right side. That is all. Jacques Chevenik, it is the sentence of this court that you be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy on your soul. A real-life drama proving that crime does not pay will be presented immediately after a message from John Barclay. Here he is. Blue Coal's distinguished home heating expert, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, and good evening, friends. Most of us have our hands pretty full these days, not only with our regular daily work, but also various war defense jobs, such as air raid wardens, volunteer fire auxiliaries, and so forth. This leaves us less time to pay attention to our own personal comfort. 
A large portion of every family's comfort these days is naturally derived from the home. Home heating, for instance, is an important function towards affording us complete relaxation. And one advantage you folks have in home heating is the John Barkley serviceman. He's at the beck and call of any hard coal user. Now, while there isn't a great deal of difficulty generally encountered in the regulating of your heating plant, there are sometimes little things that keep it from operating properly and economically. It takes on your part just a telephone call to have a John Barclay serviceman inspect your heating plant. He'll give you many little tips on adjusting your dampers and also tell you, which is very important, the proper size coal you should use. You'll find your John Barclay serviceman a courteous, businesslike, and helpful individual. He represents a service offered only by your neighborhood blue coal dealer, and it is his job to see that you get the best results from your heating plant. So, folks... Tomorrow morning, call your neighborhood blue coal dealer and ask him to send over a John Barclay serviceman. At no cost, no obligation to you. And remember, this service is offered exclusively by your blue coal dealer. Thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Berlin, Germany. A stormtrooper, revolver in his holster, calls at a German home. He knocks on the front door. Yo, what is it? I have come for the regular victory drive collection. It is being doubled this week. Oh, no. No, I can't afford it. Are you trying to tell me you want to sabotage the great boy about... Oh. Get some money. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Please don't hurt me. That's one way to collect money. The dictator's way. In America, the free man's way is different. Nobody comes to your house with a gun in his hand. You must go of your own free will to your nearest bank or post office and buy defense bonds. Buy defense stamps. Buy as many as you can. Buy them regularly. That's the only way to prove to the Nazis that for nations, justice for men... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. And be sure to phone your neighborhood blue coal dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. Remember, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This story was produced by the DLNW Coal Company, distributors of blue coal.